The 2008 sequel, Another Cinderella Story, stars Selena Gomez in a completely different Cinderella story than the 2004 original starring Hilary Duff. In fact, this would be the first of several completely different yet exactly the same movies in the Cinderella Story Sisterhood, which includes Cinderella Story, If the Shoe Fits, and Cinderella Story, Christmas Wish, both starring nobody. But let's remain focused on this Cinder sequel, where a young Selena Gomez pretends that a 10 years less young Drew Seeley is also a high school senior, all while the editors transition not so seamlessly between Selena and her professional dance double in a screenplay that feels more rushed and formulaic than me ending this sentence with an outlandish comparison. That plus painfully low budget looking art direction, tension that fails to intensify, and relentlessly Canadian looking cold weather in what is supposed to be California. You better prepare your jazz square for a questionable choreography installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break it down like a dance combination to determine if it's a pot of boo ray or a pot of boo nay. But before we get into this particular sequel, reboot, re-smash, rehash, retelling of a classic fairy tale, as we've seen many times on this channel, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdown on Selena Gomez, Gomez <laughs> or Warner Brother premiere films such as this. Also, most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm going to do a half step a dance routine right into your living room. Make sure you click subscribe button. By the way, I see people commenting, being like, do this movie, do that movie. I'm like, you're not even subscribed. Why would you, don't request if you're not subscribed. <laughs> I've got rules now, I've got rules now. Anyway, I do remember when this movie roughly came out in 2008, I was a teenager, those were the days. And I remember specifically because this song would come on my Pandora playlist because I had a Miley Cyrus channel, obviously. I hear it every day, I hear it all the time. I'm never gonna amount to much, but they're never gonna change my mind, oh. I'm sorry, what is that Soul Cycle instructor speed rapping about? This is supposed to be our main character, Mary's daydream, completely untethered from the confines of reality. And she is up on that stage like, I wear my Adidas sweatpants, look in the mirror, and I say, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> Aside from the lyrics of this song being in a different time zone than Selena Gomez and her mouth movements, it also sort of feels like this song was likely written and produced independently from the script of the movie that's featuring it because they seemingly have nothing to do with each other. This is a cry for help. That child performer is clearly in desperate need of a better onset tutor. How many inches in a mile? She should know how to Google that by age 16. Sweetheart, there are 63,360 inches in a mile. I counted while my body got dragged behind a golf cart because I went sunbathing on what I thought was a naturally occurring field. In all of the Cinderella story movies, it seems like one thing that our main character never seems to get is mental health care from a professional, which is not hard to understand. Roughly 50% of the general population experiences mental health issues, but factors like cost or lack of time prevent access for many people. That's why I'm so proud to partner with today's sponsor, Cerebral. Cerebral is a mental health subscription that provides clients with ongoing comprehensive access to online care and medication management for anxiety, depression, and insomnia for one flat monthly rate. It's been shown that combining both therapeutic techniques with medication helps give people the best results when it comes to their mental health. Cerebral offers plans where you can access medication management, therapy, and both. And because it operates using a telemedicine model, you're able to schedule appointments much faster and at your own convenience. Cerebral allows you to have your doctor and your therapist on the same platform so you can make sure you're receiving the best 
best care. Rather than spending $500 or more to see a psychiatrist, Cerebral offers more affordable options. 80% of patients with Cerebral can have their first visit within five days of signing up, and Cerebral clinicians are rated 4.9 out of five by their clients. If you're looking for a convenient solution for all of your mental health care, Cerebral might be a good fit for you. Click the link down in the description to get started with Cerebral and access quality mental health treatment today for as low as $30 for your first month. But back to this fairy tale where mental health care doesn't seem to exist. This movie really tried to maximize its profit with an original soundtrack by cramming this main song into the opening scene and end credits while also forcing its title into all of the dialogue. Tell me something I don't know. Tell me something I don't know. Tell me something I don't know. Okay, fine. We're gonna start with a brief explainer on how to adapt your screenplay to better fit the theme of its theme song. Spoiler alert, it's not about just cramming the title into random sentences. That could create a very disturbing breakdown in the clip, sometimes causing a full-on clip breakdown hosted by Nick DiRamio. The first movie, I think, matched the spirit of this particular song even better because in that movie there was like Jennifer Coolidge's character actively discouraging the talents of Hilary Duff such as being smart and wearing a baseball hat. While this movie has a lot of the evil stepmother character Dominique being shady in the background, it doesn't have that moment that Jennifer Coolidge has in the first one where she's like, you're not very pretty and you're not very bright. Where it's like they're really telling her, sit down you're nothing. I wish they had Dominique in this being like, you're never gonna amount to anything, just like your mother never got past being my backup dancer because she wasn't good enough. That we don't ever get. I want that. Give me cruelty. Give me barbaric cruelty. Speaking of which, we kind of briefly meet the quote unquote ugly stepsisters, who in this case are really just like the foster sisters or the biological children of Dominique, who's played by Jane Lynch. Her mother was one of my dancers, but then she died. But I needed some help around the house, so I took her a little brat in. Uh, anyway, I just felt like randomly explaining that to you, featured extra and featured extra wearing a newsboy cap for fashion. That extra was like, sorry, there's nothing on this makeup brush. As you can tell from my hat, I thought I was going to be playing some sort of 19th century golfer today. I don't like this exposition or any exposition, really. This is particularly lazy. It's making me actually miss how in the first Cinderella story, Hilary Duff gave all of this this setup as a storybook-esque voiceover. And if this movie really wanted to copy the format of the original, then Mary's dead mom should be a hot dad. And the movie should start by letting us see the earthquake that kills him. How did Mary's mom die? Trampled by Dominique's dancers? Also, it's weird that Dominique isn't related in any way to the family. She's just like, oh yeah, her mom was my dancer. Why couldn't it have been like, oh, her mom was my sister-in-law, so I let her be my dancer. But really, she was like trying to hold her back the whole time. I want them to actually be related, like in Cinderella, not just an abusive foster mom. But whatever, we get the feeling from this cheesy acne commercial that Dominique is a fading, washed up former pop star. And her daughters are clearly like just spoiled. Teen heartthrob Joey Parker has decided to bring his triple threat back home to the hills. <laughs> In PG movies, the most sexually suggestive move that a heartthrob can do is swinging their microphone stand around like 1970s Elvis. They're like, all oh, you 15 year olds, pretend that you're this pole. I'm gonna kick you over and then help you stand back up again baby. The news lady announces that this Joey Parker is coming back to spend his senior year at his former high school, and he's also holding a dance contest where the winner will be able to be in a music video with him. That event is just two weeks away. We get a flash of a calendar so you can really contextualize this whole movie within the month of February. Next we see, what's her name? Mary's life is like at school. Mary is not like other girls, okay? She skateboards the short distances that would actually be more practical to walk. 
She put on her elbow pads and knee pads just to scuttle down that sidewalk, looking like she's a little scared. Someone really wanted a reason to justify carrying a cumbersome piece of wood from class to class. The biggest problem my brain has with the character of Mary is how the screenplay is like, she's the biggest, nerdiest dork at her school. But also she's like totally cool and you should sing her song at your birthday party slash buy her lip balm set at CVS. We, in the car, meet uh, Tammy, Mary's best friend, who is an aspiring fashion designer, and another sort of like on the outskirts of popularity type. A free thinker, if you will. Much to the chagrin of the popular girl, whose name is Natalia, I wanna say. I'm almost definitely gonna call her Natalia, even if that's not her name. Natalia? Yep, it's Natalia. Natalia. <laughs> never gonna remount too much, so I'm never gonna make my mind. Girl, too many lyrics in there. You gotta Stop. Tap the brakes. Let's see how Natalia feels about it. <laughs> so sorry, Mary. I didn't even see you standing there. It's like you were totally invisible. Check out my totally invisible finger! She must be talking about the part of her hand that a dog chewed off when she was a toddler. She didn't make a sound the entire time. No one knows why. Just kidding. That was a super clever and family-friendly way around having Tammy stick up her middle finger. It's like when kids used to be like, read between the lines. I am, sweetheart, and it's telling me that you were homeschooled for religious reasons. Also, Natalia just threw about a half gallon of milky-looking Coke product placement onto Mary, and she reacts with the stoicism of a monk. I'm just watching this on a screen 14 years later, and I still ran crying into the guidance counselor's office, which caused a school-wide lockdown. They really want random adults checking in at the security office these days? And honestly, that makes sense. There could be idiots and weirdos out there. So next, Joey Parker arrives at the school Cool, and all sorts of things that confuse me happen. Like this nerdy kid throws up out of being nervous and then he's like fighting him. I, I, it's like a dream. It's also confusing because it's like, when did Joey leave this school? What? Like, did he get famous freshman year? I'm trying to get, I'm trying to understand. I just want you to chillax and remember, I got your back. Aw, thanks for all those supportive buzzwords, token black friend. I'm definitely gonna give you a rap verse in the final scene now. Dustin here is Joey Parker's best friend slash manager. We just saw this trope of a famous leading man having a trusty friend slash employee who literally adds an element of hip hop to the film via dance moves or song features. They did the same exact thing in Starstruck with Stucky. Yeah, I remember their names after the video is done being shot. That's when I remember their stupid names. So while we've seen this trope before in other movies, I've seen the actor who plays Dustin in other shows. That's Marcus T. Polk. I grew up watching him as the little brother Miles in the show Moesha. He got kidnapped in one episode and Moesha fainted, which I, right when I saw it, I was like, this is a serious episode, but I know that's gonna get laughs. Cause she like, Ooh. anyway, kidnapped. So in the hallway, Joey Parker bumps into Mary and doesn't help her with her books mainly because Natalia is trying to throw herself at him, being like, we should pick up this relationship where we left off, indicating they used to have a thing. That's when we get a little bit more of these two sisters, Brie and Britt, who are pretty much always at an 11. This is our hallway. Or did you trolls forget that? How dare you come for Mary and Tammy while snarling through that grill like Hannibal Lecter. I said it before, but girls like you will always look like you have braces. Even though it also looks like you don't anymore in the poster for this movie. This is Emily Perkins and the other sister is Catherine Isabel. They also played sisters in the horror trilogy out of Canada, Ginger Snaps, which started in the year 2000. They've been in everything. Emily Perkins was also the punk reception in Juno. Her and Catherine working with Jane Lynch really make those three like antagonist characters really feel like they fit in the universe of the movie. Not much that that type of acting can do to save a horrible script, but there you go. It then implies that after classes, Mary skateboards from her school in Beverly Hills to downtown LA just in time for her dance class, which she's too poor or whatever to afford. But luckily this dance class takes 
takes place behind two-way or one-way glass. A viewing room exists. I, can you tell me if this is a really a thing that dance classes have, a viewing room on the other side of the mirrors? I guess, I guess. I don't know that this device has ever been used in a movie before, so in that way, it felt unique. It's like, oh, this cool kind of cinematic dynamic where she's dancing with the heartthrob, although he doesn't know she's right there. Because in the dance class, Joey Parker comes in and is like, let me show you guys a few moves for the competition. In case you don't know, Drew Seeley, who plays Joey Parker, is a Disney legend. He was the singing voice for Zac Efron as Troy Bolton in High School Musical. And then he also went on to play Troy in the High School Musical concert tour and several productions of High School Musical on stage. So he's a very talented dancer and singer and actor. <laughs> Got got everything oh, look at those dance moves. You're all a bunch of sneaky little freaky little cartoon robbers, aren't you? How very jazz one dance class of you all. Not to ruin the magic for you, but this movie seems to get a lot of mileage out of a lot of moves that you might see in a Bob Fosse number. Do you see why this movie is just a little hard to get into? It's all over the place. Mary is like, oh, you think shy child labor skateboard girls can't also dance hip-hop well watch this he had it coming do do he had it coming do do he had it coming all along like no mama i don't think that is hip-hop i don't think that is but you know joey parker is dancing up against this mirror and so is mary and they're touching and feeling their magnetic pull through the glass so it's clearly love love on top by beyonce mary has to rush home to prepare a fancy dinner where Dominique is going to try to woo Joey Parker in some sort of subplot that never ends up mattering. But when, see, this is so all over the place. Right when Mary gets home, the stepsisters will call them, even though they're actually just like not stepsisters, she never married anyone into the family. Like they have found, they found a secret tape of Mary. God, such a weird storyline. Hi, I'm Mary, and I'd like to send this video to Joey Parker. This is for you. <laughs> Explain it to my heart. Oh boy, she's really going the f in on that funky chicken there, isn't she? Nobody laugh. Maybe her mom dying messed her up in such a way that her love language is auditioning for Penny in Hairspray. This also confuses me because of chronology. Was Jordan Parker a famous pop star when they were both eight? He looks like normal present day Joey Parker on that magazine cover she's holding. So why is she so much younger that a different actress is playing her? Joey Parker, what kind of pseudo menudo kids bop factory mill did they have you work? working in as a child. That's what I want to know. Again, it's confusing because we don't know when Joey Parker was a normal student, when he became a star, and how that happened. I think it could have been cleaner, like if they were just like, oh, famous pop star Joey Parker wants to see what it's like to spend his senior year at a normal high school, getting that normal experience. And then it can be funny because it's a Beverly Hills high school that it's actually not very typical. Everybody is very Hollywood or whatever. That way it would make more sense sense for Mary to be sticking out like a sore thumb because she's so down to earth and not LA like everyone else. And then it's also like Joey Parker, instead of just being the perfect golden boy that teaches everyone dance moves with the utmost patience, maybe he has some stuff to learn about like, oh, taking it easy and not throwing around his status and acting like a normal person. I'm not saying that's far less generic. You know, we've definitely seen combinations of those elements in other movies, but at least it's not confusing like this. Also, it seems like Mary as a child was far nerdier than she is as a teenager. Like, honestly, Mary seems pretty cool as an adult. She's just like, whatever, I skateboard and I skateboard. So this like, oh, she used to be really into Joey Parker is interesting. Maybe does she still have a secret crush on him? We don't know, it's never made clear. Also, this videotape doesn't seem like strong enough blackmail for them to use against Mary. Couldn't they have something like, oh, we are, this thing will prevent you from getting into college if they find out that you never technically graduated middle school. I don't know. It could also be something where they're like, you know that no one's gonna be paying for your college unless all three of us get in, so you have to do our homework, whatever. I don't even know why they're blackmailing her. They're just like, we'll tell you later. So later there's this dinner where Dominique is trying to persuade Joey Parker to do a duet with her. And he's basically like, listen, your music's old school. It's not what's cool anymore. I'm not gonna work with you. Oh, and we 
also learn that his parents are sort of money grubbing. They're like, we want a new house. And it's just like, why are you even introducing these characters? They never come back. It's like truly mixing together all of the hits from those Disney Channel movies. And noted, this is not a Disney Channel movie. It's from Warner Brothers, but it's 100% feels like they've got too many ideas going on, but not too much physical comedy, just the right amount of that. Thanks for everything. <laughs> You, uh, you have shrimp in your hair. Come on. Mary's like, wow, nobody's ever eaten shrimp covered in my hair before, which I sort of preferred. I liked life better that way. Is this the part where we learn that Joey Parker is secretly part walrus? Because he just ate a piece of seafood indiscriminately after it was embedded in someone's scalp oils and extra hold hairspray. So after this embarrassing blunder, AKA the second time our dorky nerdy Mary has bumped into someone cute, Tammy, the best friend, is trying to convince her to go to the Valentine's Day dance because she made dresses for it. Everyone's gonna be wearing masks, which is just really weird. Again, no one will know who anyone is. Not some fake you that's been created by the I mean, start about a Tammy, what? We should really breathe in between monologues. Okay, well, you need to stop dangling pickle slices into your mouth and suckling on them like some sort of sandwich demon from a haunted McDonald's. I already pointed this out in my review of Princess Protection Program, but it's obviously worth repeating that once upon a time, Selena Gomez had an acting coach that taught her how to recite lines while pretending to eat, and she took that sh all the way to the bank, acting like she has granola in her teeth like all the time. We get it, girls, you're snacking, you're snacking. Just say the words. Suddenly, the two sisters or whatever run in and tell Dominique like, oh my gosh, we heard Mary talking. She wants to go to the dance. And Dominique is like, ugh, that won't do. And I'm like, see, this is where the movie falls apart. We never saw those two girls listening in on Mary's conversation. They just run into this next scene being like, we have this information magically. And then Dominique really has basically no motivation for preventing the daughter from going to the dance. If it's jealousy, if it's some sort of rivalry that she used to have with her mother, that should all be explained. In the first movie, you could really tell that Jennifer Coolidge's character needed Sam to stay around so that she would always have someone to work at the diner and take care of her business. And while it's clear that, yeah, Mary is meant to be like a helping hand around the house, it's never explicitly stated by Dominique that like, I can't afford to get real maids. You think I want to waste money on a real maid to come here and clean this up? I need you here, Mary. That kind of thing. See how nothing is right, nothing is quite right, is it? Not in this whole planet. So Dominique is like, no, no, I have a big party next week, so you're not gonna be able to go to that part, to that ball, the masquerade Valentine's Day ball. You're gonna have to clean my bedroom. So she calls her best friend, Tammy, who kind of subs in for the magic fairy godmother in this movie. I guess because she's the one who makes the dresses for them, but it's like, okay, okay, you're trying. Tammy, I can't go to the ball tonight. Dama Freak's making me clean her bed. Bedroom. You're in her lair? There are species of bugs in here still unknown to science. Oh boy, they didn't exactly have the writing team from Gossip Girl working on these jokes and dialogue. In fact, the writers of Gossip Girl found the writers from this movie and then cyberbullied them into a mental hospital. And then they used that as a storyline on season three of Gossip Girl. Tammy's like, don't worry, I have a plan. I'm gonna come help you. And so they still show this like very time consuming montage of Mary cleaning up some stuff. Oh, I hate this movie. That's when Tammy shows up and she's like, I brought resources. Mary, meet my sister's boyfriend's cousin's cousin. Hello, hello. You go to dance? Very nice. House clean by midnight, no problem. Um, why does this depiction of an Asian person feel like a character that Walt Disney would have sketched while drinking? We've already talked about the harmful stereotype in American cinema of the older ingratiated Asian person in some subservient role. But this is definitely the first time where we've seen such characters substitute the helpful rodents from Cinderella. Real nice, Hollywood. You've outdone yourself with poor taste, like a new menu item from our Again, more info that we never seemed to get before. They walk in, the, the, the two girls, they walk into the party and Selena's character, Mary, is the only one wearing a red dress. Cause as it turns out, as we find out just now that this is a black and white ball, I get confused. I'm like, how did Mary going to the same school not know that it was a black and white ball? Wouldn't she have been like, I'm not gonna wear this dress that calls attention to myself. I'm a shy girl. Like if it's supposed to be Tammy being like, oh, I tricked you, 
you into wearing something bright to a black and white ball, that needs to be made a lot more clear. But I just, I can't think of a single way how that would have happened where Mary doesn't know something going on in her own school. Anyway, all of the kids are a buzz, buzz, buzzing about this mystery girl who walked in. This worked so much better in Hilary Duff's version. Such a better movie. Who is that? No idea. I'm gonna find out. Who's the low hen who decided to make her own rules? You need a drink, punch bowl straight ahead. I'm once again left to wonder why movies think that soft drinks become some magical elixir that young people drink to relax as soon as they are at a school dance, youth nightclub, or impromptu teen party scene. They're always like, you could use some punch, as though they're like, you need a vodka soda. Like, what? And why do we keep perpetuating this myth of the gymnasium punch bowl? That must be a relic left left over from when baby boomers were still writing our TV shows. Can I get you some punch? Um, no, because it is not 1950 and I don't drink out of giant open containers of liquid. How about some bottled water? Joey Parker was instantly intrigued by this girl with the messy hair as soon as she walked in. Again, they did not know how to style poor Selena Gomez's hair. I don't know what this, they were like, let's towel dry it and then send her right out on camera. That's a nice cape. I mean, coat. It's a nice, nice coat. What should I do? You should try adjusting the eye holes of that mask, Wonder Woman. You're looking like this is a surprise party. What should I do? Girl. While those two are flirting, the other two are also flirting. Weird. Are you supposed to be Cupid? Yeah, obviously, Tammy, you might have missed the memo because you were too busy stealing that hat from the Babadook. You look like you're remaking the Lady Marmalade music video with a group of sad clowns. But okay, yeah, his wings, his wings are the problem. Seemingly emboldened by the anonymity of her mask, which like, that's not really that helpful. Anyway, but she's in, she's feeling confident because she's wearing a mask. So Mary challenges Joey Parker to dance. <laughs> and that's not really what, you don't challenge someone to dance. They dance. Will Willingly together, but it sucks. It's a challenge for me. I am feeling challenged. Look at him move. That has to be Joey. But who's the tramp? I guess I never realized that the eye area accounts for apparently 99% of the human brain's ability to recognize other people. That sort of proves how smart and unique I am because my brain is also sometimes able to recall people's hair, voice, stature, scent, forehead, jawline, and affectations. I know, when it comes to identifying people, I'm sort of like Einstein. This is my favorite picture of him. So these two are are really good at dancing. Like, we really are so impressed. I'm not sure how Selena Gomez has this like professional dance skill when she's only been taken stealing dance lessons from behind a piece of glass. At one point she's like, my mom was a dancer, so I guess it's in my blood. It's like, dancing is not hereditary. That was an interpretive dance about the time that Tammy stole that hat from the Babadook. See how full circle it all becomes? Also, enjoy this, the first of many extended wide shots, where we are looking directly into the brightly lit face of Selena Gomez's dance double, Amelia Randall. They do not even try to hide it sometimes. Just like Natalia, Brie, and Britt can't hide their jealousy over this mystery girl who's clearly the girl they live with, so they have to sabotage this whole number. Oh. You were amazing. I wasn't, I fell. Yeah, because those girls who own you dumped giant salad bowls of Mancala beads onto the floor. Why do you have such low self-esteem? The art direction of this snack table also gives me pause. Come children, slurp from this wide open crystal dish of red liquid, and then use your hands to scoop our gallons of black and white M&Ms into your mouth. These teenagers' tongues are going to be coated in so many weird colors by the time they start making out later, but it's your right to be gross, teenagers. In a very familiar turn of events. The clock strikes midnight, so Mary has to run home because that's when her evil stepmother stand-in is going to be back from her party, and that's when she said she'd have the house clean by. But on her way out, she drops not a glass slipper, but a Zune, the failed portable media player from Microsoft that apparently tried to get its footing with the youngsters via this movie. Obviously, Joey Parker picks up the Zune and is like, what is a 
zoon. He assumes the zoon and whatever, whatever, the girls rush home and Mary gets home in the nick of time, doesn't get caught for sneaking out. It's fine. The next day at school, Joey announces how he's going to try and find the girl that he met the night before. And in order to find her, the people need to name the first four songs on the Zunes playlist to prove their identity. Do you see how these are just uninspired copy and paste adaptations that truly just feel like they're like bending over backward, like it's laborious to see how they try to adapt this in a way that somehow still doesn't make sense. Cinderella is such a simple story and they modernize it only by f***ing it up and making it more convoluted. What is this? Everybody please, single file line, all right? <laughs> you guys are so not his mystery girl. Um, way to erase Joey Parker's bisexuality. He asked those two to get in line. That's why one of them is like, what the f***? Bro, the two stepsisters embarrassingly try to prove that they're the loves of his life by being like, look how great of a dancer I am. And I'm just like, hey, if that girl you met with the mask on wanted to be identified, wouldn't she be able to come up and make herself known to you? And if she's that special, would it really be that hard to know if you're talking to her again? Seems weird that yes. Seems weird that yes to that. God, they're all the same. But that girl from last night special to you. First of all, how are you going to say that all of those girls are the same when one of them looks like Beetlejuice on Broadway and two of them are out and proud gay men? Although if you're talking about racial diversity, yeah, does seem very low contrast in that lineup. So that's valid. That's a valid observation to have about yourself. Britt overhears that Mary is secretly the owner of the Zoom. And so she sneaks into Mary's room and writes down the songs on the playlist. But it's very clear that she's not actually a match. So basically Joey's getting real tired of the school's shenanigans. And that's when Mary picks the worst time to go up to Joey and try to tell her the truth. Um, I'm- Dominique is relentless. Bree, Britt, and now her. I'm looking for somebody and I just, don't have the time right now to talk. By the way, have you seen a girl who looks and sounds exactly like you, except for possibly a small section of her face where I don't know what's going on under there. So I guess I'm basically looking for you, but with bright blue eyebrows or something, who knows? Like, what is this face blindness? Why is Mary even so discouraged by this? She's like, oh, he thought I was gonna ask about the duet. And then she like runs off all perturbed. You already knew that this guy was so confused that he was trying to identify people based off the first four songs on their Zune. That itself doesn't make sense. Couldn't he assume that if that girl wanted to be found, she could just show up with the same mask that she had at the party and be like, see, it's me, same person. Is that proof enough for you, Mr. No Object Permanence? So that scares off Mary and she's like, ugh, he will never want to be with a guy like me. I think they could have gone much harder on that where he's like, oh yeah, you're Dominique's assistant, right? Tell her that no, I'm never gonna be in her stupid duet, and if she sends another one of her lackeys to come ask me, I'm gonna tell her off too. You know, and have it be like, he's really loses it on her a little bit. Something that he could apologize for later. But anyway, that night is the party that Dominique was planning. <gasps> you know, those purple highlights look very familiar. Oh wait, so now a paper Zorro mask from the party store is not the witness protection program? Gotta say, Dustin's level of basic reasoning feels much more realistic. Since this whole masquerade mystery girl device didn't even really work when this story was a cartoon. I can tell when two things are the same. <laughs> so because Dustin and Tammy recognize each other, <gasps> Dustin is able to introduce Mary and Joey. Oh my God, these names are truly ringing in my ears on this evening. Basically, she's trying to make a good impression on her longtime crush when the stepsisters make the worst possible thing they could do by playing that embarrassing tape from, I guess, a couple years ago when Selena Gomez was a toddler. So she runs out of the room screaming and crying embarrassed and I'm just like, I mean, I guess. I wish they could have found some way to combine this embarrassment with Mary realizing she would 
never get into her dance school. Like if she had this big audition number planned and she had a perfect dress for it and then they came out and were like making fun of her and they ruined the dress, that would be like, oh my God, they're really ruining her life. This like just embarrassing tape thing doesn't seem like enough to make her cry. And it also is making her really upset with nothing to do with her bigger dreams of school. <laughs> She said, no one's gonna laugh at the girl who gouges out her own eye. Oh, that's just her trying to look sad. Would it help with your fake crying if you turned on a few more lamps in this room? There's even one behind that privacy screen. Did your mom leave you a bunch of shares in General Electric when she died? What's the tea? But after taking off her tearaway waitress outfit, Mary comes to the realization she can prove she's the girl from the playlist. And she grabs her boombox and draws out Joey Parker by playing one of the songs on the playlist. So he comes out and he's like, I knew you were my mystery girl. It's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I want to take you out, Mary. That's him admitting that he was hired to kill her. But of course, dreams come true. Mary wants to go out with him too. Mary, get in here. And that's my cue. Wait, you gonna give me an answer? Yes. Oh, and then she marches off in her little SpongeBob shoes. Yes. Also, when they showed this house from above, it didn't have a pool in the backyard. So what is the truth, Canada? At school the next day, in their blossoming young love, Joey offers to teach Mary some moves for her big dance audition, which she had gotten a letter saying that someone was going to call and schedule an audition with her. Yeah, it shows her getting the letter. So she's like, oh my God, I'm gonna, it's gonna happen. But then it shows the woman from the dance academy call Dominique and Dominique is like, like, oh, she can't come to the audition. She broke both her legs. So she sh sabotages the audition and gives Mary a whole long list of chores, which the girls orchestrate, the mean girls, in order to prevent Mary from having a chance to get closer to Joey. Oi. But Joey's like, don't worry, I can teach you how to dance while we do some chores, you know. Bam. Okay, I don't want to see either one of you do this Willy Wonka two-step one more time for the rest of the movie. I think you practiced it enough that it would have started looking cool by now, if at all possible. Every single move they do in this, they're like, uh -huh. I do do like okay you all look like Justin Timberlake to me it's not hitting so uh, Natalia and Brit and Brie are watching their love grow stronger despite all of the planning that they're interfering with and Natalia's like really starting to lose her grip what's he seeing that little freak show we need a plan B does the B stand for blend out your eyeshadow more? Because then yeah, we definitely need a plan B. You fully carved Swiss Miss instant cocoa into your creases this morning, sweetheart. And then you went to school that way, leaving your hair completely unstyled from what I can tell. Natalia's hair is always like, they literally were like, let's just air dry it, we don't care. The hair and makeup in this movie is unprofessional to say the least. This is where they try to force in a singing moment. Ooh. Do you wanna help me with the harmony? The way you make me feel like I'm finding something real. Okay, thanks for your help on that. I think we should just stick to dancing together. I think that's more our vibe. Joey lets Mary know that dancing with her reminds him why he started dancing in the first place, beyond all the fame. And you're getting closer. So are you. Why don't we pick up again tomorrow, right here? As in my house, as in this position. I'm not that kind of guy. Mm, somehow I don't find that entirely convincing. Why don't you both shut up with this mid-Atlantic banter? This isn't Casablanca. This is another Cinderella story, part two. It happens again, comma, the girl who dances like a scarecrow. You need to get with the program. So that's when evil plan B starts. It looks to Mary like she got some flowers from Joey saying to meet him on his back patio. So she goes over there and through the window, she sees Natalia sitting on his bed talking to him. Even though he looks like he wants nothing to do with the conversation, conversation, obviously, and Mary jumps to every conclusion that ever makes her the victim and is like, I gotta run down the street. And so she runs away without even using her brain or her independent thought to figure out like, oh, maybe there's multiple different things that could be happening here and I should ask about it. Like this is my least favorite type of third act conflict when somebody just like sees something and doesn't question it and just believes it and is like, oh, I'm never gonna talk to that person again based on something I saw that could also be interpreted multiple ways. It's like, okay, I thought you were supposed to be the 
smart main capable character, whatever. Things really are looking grim for Mary. She even gets this fake letter from Dominique saying that her whole audition had been canceled. It was a mistake. So she's pretty heartbroken right now. And she gives Joey a piece of her mind. Oh. You know what really sucks about falling for a guy you know you're not right for? How you have to prevent yourself from blinking long enough to make your eyes look wet for the emotional climax. Joey Parker and Dustin beg Tammy for help making things right. And she helps organize it. The two of them go and pick up Mary that night. And they're like, put on something nice. We just want you to come to the sing song dancing competition for just a second. And that somehow convinces her, even though it's like, what could you possibly be doing there if you're not competing? Dustin's like, Joey knows he messed up. It's like, not really. It was all a setup. Whatever. At least we get a little glimpse of the other dance acts that Mary or anyone in this contest might be up again. Let's hear it. As we announced during the intermission, the judges will not be awarding extra points for hair wetness. That was just a strange rumor on Facebook designed to embarrass the contestants and force the front row audience members to purchase rain ponchos. Everyone up in this dance contest is like, do, 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 do. It's like, why even make a dance movie if you can only hire, I think two to five professional dancers? You, you base this whole movie around dance. <laughs> so Joey comes up on stage and then performs, but also also invites Mary up on stage and is like, I really want to dance with Mary. And he's like, come on, let's have a dance battle right here. And I guess this is supposed to like capitalize on their like playful competition that they had going on throughout, but that never really landed for me. I guess they could have been a little more competitive. Like if they had had an impromptu dance off during their cleaning, that would have seemed cool, but it mainly just looked like them trying to make it seem like Selena Gomez knew a little bit more dance than she did. And they do that again here with some more great stunt work. pretty much how I would imagine my yoga instructor doing in a dance battle. In fact, if we zoom in on that wide shot of the stage, it could very well be my yoga instructor or pretty much any person on earth besides Selena Gomez. That's not her. <laughs> but they obviously needed to use a double here because only professional dancers could recreate these moves with the adequate level of soul. <laughs> Oh, not Peter Pan taking flight to Never Never Land. <laughs> That's what that is. Please, Selena Gomez, I'm begging you, what can you do to help make this a little more hardcore? Give me something with some edge. Not the something with some edge being just the drums from Dave Matthews Band. IMDB tells me that Selena Gomez did four weeks of dance rehearsals for this movie. And it's really obvious in this scene that those rehearsals were one time per week. Cause again, I'm seeing a mostly non-Selena stand in doing these moves. And again, they're not doing much to hide it. I'm also obsessed with this back and forth dance off being the replacement for an actual musical number in the climax. Like you don't want to give us a big song and dance. Okay, they're just like, Chicka 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 wow chicka chicka wow wow. I'm not here for that. <laughs> you gotta give us Camp Rock and give us the fun song along with the crazy arm movements where they're like, crazy, 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 don't you see what you got? Now I look crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's see what you got. So Selena Gomez gets off the stage after doing a pretty bang up job dancing against the Joey Parker. And uh, when he gets off stage, he gets to explain himself to her. I was, I was set up by your stepsisters. Psst. Drew, they don't actually play her stepsisters in this version of the movie, remember? They are the mean daughters of a fading pop star who got sole custody of the daughter of one of her dead backup dancers. I know it sucks, but it's what you gotta say for continuity, because I guess continuity counts in this movie all of a sudden. By some good fortune, that woman who wanted to schedule the audition shows up all the way from New York and is like, I wanna schedule an audition with you, and uh, you don't look like you have broken legs, and it's like, why did you come to see this. What? So anyway, Dominique is caught off guard in her evil plan. Don't you pull that face with me. Girls, come with me. Ah! Oh! Oh, That's actually what stunt performers consider to be group sex. And the more folding chairs you noisily knock over, the hotter it is. When Jennifer Coolidge played the evil stepmother in her version of this movie, the karmic payback was that she was arrested for fraud, for stealing Sam's money. In this movie, the antagonists face retribution by either running off crying like Natalia, or like Dominique here, just falling off the stage. And that's supposed to leave me satisfied? I'm literally bloodthirsty 
thirsty right now after watching this movie. Which means now I have to go walk far into the desert all night, biting the heads off of rattlesnakes. And then I'm gonna twirl them around like a boa and say, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me something I don't know. Eating some snake heads, drinking their entrails. But we're not getting out of here without the full extended version of the song, sweetheart. Listen up to these amazing l rap lyrics as promised. Hit the track like Katrina, Jesus. I think after that national tragedy happened, a few too many songwriters were like, mm, I'm gonna use that for symbolism about how hard this beat goes. Like, maybe don't, maybe don't. But anyway, that's everything that there is to know about another Cinderella story. But don't worry, there's another, another, another one too. So if you wanna see even more Cinderella stories broken down on this channel, then you better jump on that like button, give this video a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you wanna see even more videos like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So Make sure you turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you something you don't know. Something you don't know, something you don't know. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes and virtual watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for kickball changing the way that we look at dance. Once again, I will see you next time. Watch.